Hello everyone, Studlord here, and as I release this video, you have just a few more days to vote for your favourite fan designs for the Series 4 BrickLink Designer Program. Now whether you love the BrickLink LEGO designs, or you hate them with a fiery passion that reaches down into your soul and makes you want to tear your hair out, they are certainly popular. We've obviously just had Series 1 crowdfunding on that, still open for the two sets that aren't yet fully funded, namely the General Store and the Parisian Street, the others fully sold out now. We've got our finalists for Series 2, which I've already done a video on, and we've got our finalists for Series 3, but now is the time to have your say, if you haven't already, for what we're going to get in Series 4. Now I'm not going to look through all of these in this video, there's over 200 submissions, we'd be here for hours, so what I've done is gone through and picked out the best ones. The ones that have the most community support, the ones with the best mixture of design and piece ratio, the ones LEGO themselves are most likely to give the okay to. Of course this is all subjective, so let me know in the comments which you agree with me on, which you disagree. Let's get a bit of a polite conversation going down there, or alternatively, forget the politeness. Introduce name calling, make it harsh and fiery, that's always fun too. Now I must say I have no interest in these designs, I'm not affiliated with them, I don't know the designers, I've got nothing to do with BrickLink or LEGO. So with no further ado, let's dive in and take a look at these sets. Okay, now to start, I'm doing this roughly in size order, but I'm also beginning with the ones that I do have a bit of a question mark over. So for example, the bakery at the wall here, lovely little set. I can see this being a hit with Castle fans. I love the fact that it can just easily be connected on to your existing builds. That is a good thing. It's a nice looking little set and at the piece count shouldn't be too expensive. So I can see this one being popular. That said, there's nothing outstanding about it. Nothing that with just a little bit of mocking we couldn't put together ourselves. And more to the point, this is exactly the sort of thing which I can see LEGO not necessarily releasing themselves as a full-on set, but maybe as a GWP down the line. I'm not sure that this will get through. For another small one that is worth a mention, with a decent amount of support already actually is, this is a little flower shop or florists, and it's done really prettily. I think the designer is spot on here. It's a lovely looking little thing, packed full of colour. How well will it fit in with a city street lineup? I think that people are going to reserve their votes in this side of things for perhaps the much bigger builds. Then we've got the market, and for those who love to do winter village scenes, this one is splendid. I love the way that the designer has done the mixture of the white tiles and leaves on the tree. It really does look like snow has fallen, and I think this truly would be a splendid addition to any winter village lineup. And it would also be lovely to get the extra animals. Here's the thing. Lego tend to stick with their own designs when it comes to winter scenes. And because of that, I seriously question whether this would actually make it through Lego slash Bricklink's own elimination process, even if it it did manage to garner enough public support. What do you think? My next pick is the Ice Sculptor's House, and I have to commend the designer here on how he's done the snow, or she has done the snow. It really does look like it's just dripping off the roof. The whole idea of an ice sculptor as well, that is great for a winter village, but it does face the same problem that I referenced before. I don't see Lego or BrickLink putting this through. I think they're very much going to keep to their own Christmas winter village designs. Now for something a little bit different, the 060 switching locomotive. And I like this. To my knowledge, LEGO has never done a switching locomotive that performs shunting operations. What's more, this can be put onto standard tracks and apparently has space to be motorized as well. You're not going to get those components with it. You'll have to buy those separately, but it should be easy to motorize. And I really like the design on this one. It's nice. It's not too big. It doesn't have that much support at the moment. And I think that's because all the train enthusiasts, there are other ones that are coming up which are going to beat this one out. For that reason, I don't think it's going to make it through, but it is worth you taking a look at. It is a nice little set. And now this is something, I mean, look at this. This is terrifying. We've got the Deep Sea Explorer, which is basically a submarine that's meant to look like an angler fish. And I mean, it's a little bit freaky, to be honest. I don't know, this is pretty impressive. It's very, very different. I think this is going to get a lot of support. The designer's done a super job here, totally out of the box. And I think this would be a really fun one for both play and display by the look of it. Not a bad size either, should come in at a reasonable price point. It's got a lot of support already, so that's always a good sign. I think this one could be a real contender. I think this is going to particularly appeal to the steampunk fans. It's that whole post-Victorian industrial revolution vibe that certainly has a strong following. Then we've got I'd Rather Be a Unicorn. Now, while this definitely isn't one for me, I just had to include it because what we effectively have here is a mechanised unicorn that pumps up and down. And for any fans of The Witcher who know what Geralt and Yennefer would use this for, I think this is definitely one that you'd need to have. Although I very much doubt that it's probably what the designer had in mind when they did it. 
Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But for that reason alone, I had to call this out. Then we've got the Art Nouveau Market Hall, and this is basically an unconnected modular, and I'm not sure how well it's gonna garner support because of that. It looks very much like a sort of train station, but it isn't, and I do like the design. It's very pretty, very nicely done, would be excellent in a city setup. It has a reasonable amount of support already, and I do like the idea of it obviously being unconnected, but that also could be its downfall. You've gotta have quite a specific space in your city setup to place something like this. So just trying to think of it from a practicality point of view I can see this one splitting opinions some people are going to love it other people aren't going to want it and for that reason I question whether this one is going to manage to make the enough support to get through now for one that I really like this is the frozen river bridge and it's got some really nice parts usage on it look at all the snake heads that are going down the sides that's just brilliant there's some beautiful details in here the way they've done the steps is lovely the water I think this is a super I was going to say little set that's the only thing this isn't that little 1700 parts it doesn't have the biggest amount of support at the moment on there and I think that's probably the main reason now something else for the steampunk fans, we've got the Merchant Boat, and I'm just fully not entirely sure what to make of this, mainly because it would kind of struggle to fit into probably most setups. You've got to have quite a specific build, or in this case, obviously, river build going for this to fit into, but it's just a fun idea. It's a good looking thing. It's got a fair amount of support already, so again, this could be one of those ones that sneaks through, but I just think it's a little bit too niche, a little bit too specific, not going to have enough fan support to make it through. But maybe I'm wrong. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. It is a good looking thing. Now, exactly the same can be said for the Sunset Ranch. This is a really good looking thing. I think this will go fantastically for all of the Western fans out there. It's just got a lovely vibe going for it, some wonderful detailing, whether or not all that detail would actually make it through if this did get enough votes. I'm not so sure about that. And perhaps this needed to be a little bit of a smaller set in order to stand more of a chance. I think 2,000 parts is starting to enter the territory of some other sets that are going to probably knock it out the water. And now, choo-choo, we've got another train. Easily motorizable, and it can be put onto standard tracks. It's got some lovely attention to detail here. Good looking thing, already got quite a lot of support in the comments as well. I think the main problem that a lot of the designers of the trains are gonna face in this round is that there's quite a few. There's, there's been a lot of train submissions and that means it's gonna split the vote. Will this one come out on top? Mm, for me, I don't think so, because there's still something to come that I think is better than this. And now we have the Wild West Post Office. And if this looks slightly familiar to you, it's probably because the designer gave us the general store in series one. And this will go superbly with it. Done obviously in the same style. It's a great looking thing. I really like it. I would definitely buy this. I bought the general store from series one. But here's the thing, it's not sold out yet. Okay, your other ones from series one, your old train shed, mountain fortress, and the snack shack, they've all sold out, happened really quickly. Both your Parisian street and your general store, they haven't yet. And I'm slightly surprised by the general store, I'll be honest. I thought this was going to go really quickly. I ordered one for myself. I like Wild West. I'm going to have it on display. Now, because of that, I would like this as well. But I do question now, even if this gets enough votes, whether Lego and Bricklink themselves would design it. Let's be honest. They're wanting to sell the sets. And the ones that sell the quickest are the ones that they're going to like the best. Then it's yet another treat for castle fans. We've got the medieval seaside market, and this is a fantastic idea. A little harbour fort and market. This goes fantastic for any castle lineup. It's gonna add a lot to it. I really like the colors. I would have preferred if we had a bit more water on display and that it wasn't just the blue base paint. Maybe if we had some translucent tiles in there as well, it would look really good. So that's a little bit of a letdown. Nonetheless, the fact you can reconfigure this around, connect it to other builds, it's been really nicely thought out. Designers put the time to give some story behind it as well. We've got a nice range of minifigures too, and it has got a lot of support. So I expect this one to be a really strong contender, and it'll deserve it if it makes it through. There's just a few things that I would have liked to have seen added onto this, which would have made it even better. I think for me though, my favorite thing is the horse and cart pulling what could be ale, but given what is likely grapes next to it, is gonna be a vat of wine. And that is always enough to win my vote. And now we've got George Stevenson's Rocket. This pays homage to one of the first and most iconic locomotives in history. It can also be motorized with a bit of customization, but it does include the pieces to do so. You obviously will just need to get your power up separately. This was built here in England in Newcastle, 
and actually won the famous Rainhill trials between Liverpool and Manchester. Now this is a stunning recreation of something, this wasn't the first steam train, but it was the first to bring in a whole new range of innovations back in its day. And because of that, this has got a huge amount of nostalgia attached to it. I think this is gonna get quite a lot of votes. That said, it is extremely niche, so whether it's gonna to manage to get enough support to actually be chosen in design, that is a different matter. Don't forget, this is a big set. It's gonna be competing against others which are probably gonna have much more of the popularity vote, shall I say. But this is just fantastically put together. And fun fact, the real train is now based at a place called Locomotive in Shildon, which is near Bishop Auckland in County Durham of the north of England. And funnily enough, exactly the same place where there is a yearly Lego brick show. And now a big one for fans of classic space. This is the Galactic City. And I mean, color-wise, absolutely perfect. This is really going to go with the Galactic Explorer. This is going to be massively popular. Quite a lot of comments already, good support. And yes, we know that LEGO themselves are going really hard back into space. So that might play against this because they might themselves have something in the works that's not incredibly dissimilar to this. But it's a fantastic idea, good looking set. But whilst I think this will be popular with fans, I seriously question if it's actually gonna make it through to become one of the finalists. Then we've got the Sculptor's Workshop, and this is a beautiful little set. There's loads going on in here. I do question though whether Lego would actually keep all of this detail. I think that it would probably be pared back a bit and that might spoil the set. But otherwise, it's a great looking thing. A bit of an odd shape, so again, that could be a question mark whether people are gonna, from a practicality side of things, be able to find a place to pop this into their cityscapes. But if you can, I can see this being a superb one. Just bear in mind that this is a big set, almost 4,000 pieces, so it would be on the pricier side. That said, huge amount of support. So I think this is going to garner an awful lot of votes. My next pick is the Autumn Train Roundhouse, and this one is interesting. It's going to be something that train enthusiasts are really going to like, because, of course, back in the days of yore, when we had the steam locomotive, they weren't actually able to reverse. They could only go forwards, which means that they needed a way to be turned around. So the whole idea is that they would be driven onto the turntable here, be spun round and then put into the sheds. I don't know whether they could reverse a short amount of way themselves or whether they needed to be shunted in. Train enthusiasts, let me know below. But this is a great idea. Now the turntable isn't motorized, but at least you can turn it. The sheds themselves are modular, so you could always add onto these. I think it's a superb idea. The main problem is it's a little bit bland looking, especially with the exposed plate on top. Now, that's all you would actually expect from a train shed, so that's not against the design. I can see why it's done like that. And then the other thing is that it's almost 4,000 pieces. So this is a big set. It's gonna come with you know a higher price tag and it's very niche. So because of that, I don't think that this is gonna make it through as a finalist, but credit where it's due, splendid idea. We've then got two hospitals in the lineup, the Just Hospital and the Modular Hospital, both of which could fit quite nicely into a city lineup. It's certainly something that's going to be appreciated and needed. They've got a bit of a different style to them, this one being perhaps a little bit more detailed. However, I don't think that it fits in as well with the existing theme, as opposed to this one which I can see matching in with Lego's existing buildings a lot better. I like the fact that we obviously get the ambulance, we've got the same signage on that as we do on the side of the building. We've obviously got that cool looking helicopter pad on the top. So out of the two hospitals, this one for me is probably better of the two, but let me know what you think below. And now for another one that's already got a huge amount of community support. This is the Empire Station monorail, using the same style of track that we saw in the piggy train from the City of Lanterns. And it's a really nicely thought out thing. Lots of attention to detail here. Superb playability, wonderful display piece. This is gonna look great in most people's cityscape setups. I can see it being massively popular. Again, the only thing that might play against it is the fact that it's just got so many parts. This is a big set. You're really gonna to have to think practically about where you're gonna put this in your city, just allowing for space for those rails to actually be placed. Because obviously you're gonna take up a lot of extra ground floor space because of those. So super thing, I think this is gonna get a lot of votes. Will it make it through to be a finalist? It's just that practicality side of things that has a question mark hanging over this one for me. Now, another one that caught my eyes being a bit out of the box is this one, the Riverside Scholars. This is giving me Legend of Zelda uh, Wind Waker vibes, or maybe even if you think about The Hobbit and Lake Town, you know, instead of, it, <laughs> instead of when it's all dark and being attacked by Smaug, more when it's, you know, on a nice sunny day. 
What it's actually based on is a story that apparently the designer has written for his or her sons. And if you read the description, it's actually quite nice. And it's got a nice amount of support as well. I just think it's a, a different looking thing and it's, it's good. Really nice use of colour. I think this would look really nice on display. Big drawback for this though, quite a lot of pieces. So again, sizable set for something which doesn't actually seem to have a huge amount of room on the inside. I'm not sure about the playability of this set. Looks a little bit cramped in there. That's definitely a mark down against it from me. But what I really do like is the use of colours for the actual build itself and the shape. Everything about that is really nice. And I do like when we get builds that are a bit different. The main thing that's probably going for this set though is the previous success the designer has had. Having already had one of these released for the original Invitational round and having the Ocean House as a finalist in Series 2. And again, you can just see the same styling running between it. Now, if people are obviously wanting to collect this sort of group of sets, that's going to be a massive plus. It really is just that playability side of things that concerns me. Where the previous design has quite a lot of space, this one does seem to be lacking in that regard. But as the buildings themselves are so out of the box different looking and with such a wonderful use of colours, I have no doubt that it would look fantastic on display. Another slightly out of the box design for the City fans is our radio station. And while it's not the prettiest looking thing from the outside, what do you expect? It's a radio station. It's got lots of details on the inside which make it really fun. And it's definitely this sort of different building. It's fantastic to add to our cityscapes to make them better. 2,700 parts. It's about the right size as well. Decent support in the comments. So again, I think this is quite a strong contender. It's always the ones like this that offer that something that's a little bit different, which generally garner quite a bit of support. Speaking of support, this one has already got loads. This is the Ballista Tower. And again, this is going to be hugely popular among Castle fans. Is it offering anything massively different to what we've seen before? Now, this has got a nice lot of details to it, and it's in a modular design where you can take all the floors apart, open them up, even add in extra floors of your own mock designs if you want to, and that's always a big positive. I think it looks good, and the design has been really well thought out. My only reservation over this is that it's not hugely different from other castle sets that we've seen. What I mean by that is, I love castles, and frankly, I'm running out of space on my shelves to display them. Is the Ballista Tower going to be something that adds enough extra to LEGO's existing offering to warrant making this into a set? Again, quite a big set as well. I'm personally not sure. Tell me what you think in the comments below. It would definitely be nice to get though because with all the archers and that ballista on the top, it'll keep your castle safe for any invading dragons. Wonder if we'll be getting any more of those coming soon. And now for something a little bit special, at least I think it is. This is the City Aquarium, and what a build. This is a fantastic idea. This would look absolutely amazing in any city setup. It's got the same sort of colours and designs going for it as we had with the Natural History Museum, and I think this would look splendid placed on the same street. Adding to that, the aquarium idea is just really, really amazing, and the fact that we get all of the coral, the fish, the sharks, this just gives us a whole load of fantastic pieces, animals, decent minifigures as well and it's just going to look fantastic on display it's a beautiful old victorian building got loads going on for it it's a big set as well it's going to have that wow factor and it's already got a lot of positive support so again i think this one stands a really good chance of actually being a finalist and it would be deserving as well i like this a lot now, I just needed to touch on this one. This is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and it's a fantastic idea. Got a good amount of support already, sizable as well, so it would look good on display. I think this could also be popular. Here's the thing. This is not going to get made by Lego or Bricklink. I really don't think so. I'll tell you for why. We've already had the Pyramid of Giza. There have been rumours of another set that's coming up, which is another ancient wonder of the world. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. That video is coming out in the next couple of days. So I think that we're going to be seeing more ancient wonders of the world directly from Lego themselves. And I really wouldn't be surprised if at some point the Hanging Gardens of Babylon was actually one of them. And bear in mind that the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were famous for using a lot of Archimedes screws to move water around. We've seen that introduced just recently into a couple of sets that LEGO have done. So I'm not going to be surprised if this one is already in the works for them. It's not the one that we've had rumours about. It's not the one that I'm going to be sharing in my upcoming leaks video. But I'm keeping my eye close on this. I think that they've got this in the works already. And now we come on to my top picks. And we've got a small one being the Magical Sword of Avalon. Which is of course from Arthurian legend being King Arthur grabbing Excalibur, the sword in the stone with the lady in the lake. And this is just a beautifully done little set. I love the idea. Huge fan of King Arthur, the round table, Camelot. 
It's what most of the history of England is actually built upon one way or another. And this is going to look amazing alongside a lot of castle sets. Obviously, just being a very small build, 524 pieces. This is going to be a low entry price point. But for any castle fan, I think this is an amazing idea. And this should absolutely be a set. I would really like to see this personally. Now, there's not a huge amount of support for it in the comments. So perhaps I am alone on that. And please let me know below. But I really like the way the tree's been done, the way the water's been done around the edges. Everything about this is ticking the boxes for me. And I think it's an amazing little idea. So I would be really excited to actually see this as a little set. Then we've got the Submarine Explorer. Again, very steampunky. This is giving me huge sort of Jules Verne Nautilus vibes. And wow, I would love to actually get that as, a, as an official Lego set. That would be incredible. Big fan of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and the Mysterious Islands. Read the book several times. Now, obviously this isn't that, but it's just such a cool looking thing. The anglerfish that we've touched on earlier was pretty awesome. But for me personally, I do prefer this. I think this is probably going to be too niche. It won't be a fine list, but I would like it to be because it's just a cool looking thing to my eye. Now for one though that I do think will be a finalist, and I actually think this is going to make it through. This is the Fire Lookout Tower. Really good idea. So easy to integrate into current setups. You get your vehicle as well, a dog, which is always welcome, some decent minifigures, but just the build itself. Beautifully put together. Fantastic idea. A little bit out of the box. I think this will look great in a city, you know, landscape, forest scene, however you're doing the setup. It just adds so much. It's out of the box. A little bit different. Cool looking thing. You've even got a squirrel in there. I've just noticed. Hadn't seen that before. It's got some wonderful details. Good playability as well as a display piece. I really wouldn't be surprised if this one becomes a finalist. I really wouldn't. Then we come on to the advanced encampment. And again, this one more than likely is going to be a finalist. It's by Sleepless Night, who gave us the Mountain Fortress, which obviously sold out within a matter of hours for Series 1. And this is just a fantastic add-on. It's going to be brilliant to have that mountain fortress and then this around the outside. It adds so much more to the story, just looks really fantastic. I, I'm already wanting to play with this. I'm looking at this and I'm wanting to play with it. Now, it has an awful lot of comments singing its praises, so this is going to get a lot of votes. It's quite a big set and the only thing that plays against this is when you have lots of little builds like this, Obviously, all of those pieces add up, but when you sort of look at it, you don't expect it to be that many. So the price that's going to be attached to this might put some people off. That said, though, this is going to be a fantastic addition to that Mountain Fortress. It's going to get a lot of support for that. Given how well the Mountain Fortress performed, Lego and Bricklink are certainly not going to be shy in bumping this to the front of the queue if people are voting for it. So again, for that reason, I think this stands an excellent chance of becoming a finalist. Then we've got Copperhead Creek. Yes, another Western theme. I do like my Westerns. This one is giving me big Lone Ranger vibes. Now I have the Lone Ranger train. It would be great to get another one and these different buildings would complement it so well. I think this offers superb playability. It's a good looking set, be motorized, comes with the track as well. We even got a strong minifigure lineup and a decent looking carriage with the horse too. I genuinely don't know whether this would be able to make it as a fine list. I suspect what is a big set that's going to have a fairly hefty price tag attached to it, this might not manage to get enough support to go through. Personally, though, I would really like to see this as a fine list because I would buy it. Then we've got another one from the same designer that brought us the general store and who also has the post office in this roundup for series four. And this train is probably the pick of the crop for me. I love steam trains and this is such a beautiful design. Yes, we've got the Western theme again, but it's already got a lot of support, a lot of love for this set. And I can see why. I think this is better than the post office submission by a long shout because you think Western and this really is just an iconic scene. Train stopping to top up on water and what a train it is. The detailing here, the colors, everything about this is super. For any fans of the Wild West, we're going to want this. There's so much playability you can have here as well. Good minifigure lineup. I think out of all the trains that we've seen, this is the best one for me. But the fact that that's also being coupled with the Wild West theme, which also has its fan base as well. If the train enthusiasts and those of us who like Wild West come together and vote for this set, then I can definitely see it becoming a finalist. We're frankly overdue a train like this. I think Lego and Bricklink know that as well. So it's going to get a lot of votes. And who knows, we may see this as the finalist that we're able to buy fairly soon.
Then we've got one for the pirate fans. This is Hug Island. Aha, me hearties. I think this is going to be a really super one. It looks really, really fun. So many play options with this. It's absolutely super. We've just seen uh, Ominous Isle in, what is it, Series 2? two or is it series three series two ominous isle different designer of course but it's a very similar style of build it's going to attract the same fan base so i think this is going to get a lot of votes now personally i'm slightly put off by the skeleton's arms obviously that is the whole point of the thing the fact that they're movable and uh, there's a picture here somewhere you can move them in I would have preferred if they had been designed more along the look of the actual rocks. Still the sort of arm shapes, but if we'd had the skull here and then we had sort of the hands as the rocks, I would have preferred it whilst keeping that movement. But that's just me. There's so much going on with this from the zip wires, the cannons, the fun little rafts and boats, pirates or the marauders, along with obviously the king's fleet. This is going to look super for display and does genuinely offer so many play options as well. Decent size too. It's got a huge amount of support for this. So I think this is going to be amazingly popular and it is going to be deserved. So this has got to be up there as one of the most likely ones that we will see as a finalist for series four. Then we have the Forestman's Tavern. This one, not got so much support in the comments, perhaps slipping under the radar a bit, or maybe I'm missing something because to me, I think this is a super set. It's different enough from what we've seen already. Yet it's giving us good space for our forestman to be in. It's got a nice colour scheme going on. I would love to see this as a set. Now, would Lego and Bricklink actually okay this? Do they have something not too dissimilar in the works? That is a big question, and that might go against this set. Now we've got the Imperial Frigate Minerva. The designer themselves have said that this is designed to dock up against El Dorado Fortress, and what a fantastic looking thing this is. We are well overdue a ship of this scale and proportion and detail. It is such a beautiful thing. This has got to be one of the best designs that I've seen this series. I am a massive fan of this. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's got a good amount of support as well in the comments. Yes, it is a big set. Again, it's going to be competing, but it's so different. I think that it stands out enough to stand a chance of getting enough support to be a finalist. I think Lego knows that we want to see another ship as well. So I think it stands making its way through that side of things too. What do you think? Are you a ship fan? Do you like this build? Because personally, it's really doing it for me. I think it's fantastic. Now for the penultimate one in this roundup, we've got the Opera House. Again, this is a little bit niche. I don't think it's going to be for everybody. I am a fan of the opera. I love it. I think the way that this has been done is beautiful. I think this is going to add a lot to a city setup. Once again, it's something that would look good alongside the likes of the Natural History Museum, obviously the aquarium that we saw earlier. And I'm kind of torn. Obviously, this is competing. Same sort of piece count as the aquarium. Would we see both of them go through? Probably not. And I think if push came to shove, I would choose the aquarium over this, but it's still a lovely looking set. It's got quite a good amount of support already, quite a bit of love for this set, and it really would add so much to your city setup. I think it's going to get a lot of votes. It stands a really good chance, in my opinion, of being a finalist, but it is competing against some strong and similar competition that might see it miss out on a spot. What do you think? Let me know below. And lastly, I have chosen the Italian street corner. There have actually been quite a few Italian-inspired suggestions throughout Series 4, which I haven't selected, because I think, personally, this is the best. It just offers so much intrigue, so much detail, wonderful lineup of minifigures, beautiful colour combinations, the fact that we've got different shops and obviously a restaurant. It's a beautiful-looking thing that offers a whole load of playability and would look fantastic in your city setup as well. It's, it's just a brilliant display piece, more than anything. Now, for me, the other thing that does it is our restaurant here. The designer has decided to call Nino's. Now, near where I used to live was probably the best Italian that I've ever been to, and it was run by a chap called Nino. So there's a little bit of uh, a personal connection there that might be swaying me. I would love to see this as a set. But it's got a decent amount of love going for it as well. Fair bit of support. It's a good size set. And although I like the Parisian street in the Series 1 that we've just had, although it doesn't seem to be doing that well at time of recording anyway as far as sales, 
I think this is better by quite a long way. The Parisian street had some flaws. This one doesn't have them. Yes, there's a few things that I would say could be done better, but overall, it's just a fantastic looking set. I think it's well deserves being voted for. And let's face it, we're going to definitely see one of them being a finalist along this sort of style. And I think this is probably the one to do it. Again, is it going to beat out some of those other larger sets? That's the question mark for me. Obviously, this is all at the moment just supposition. It's down to you what you're going to vote for. And you've only got a few days left to do it. So that brings us to the end of my roundup of the ones that I not only personally like, but the ones that seem to have got the most support so far in the comments and the ones that seem like the best style that Lego and Bricklink themselves are going to actually choose. The question is, which are you going to be voting for? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get a bit of a conversation going. It's always good to see. But that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing for more content from the wonder that is me. And for now, though, bye-bye. I will see you on the next one.